At long last, the exciting holiday we first found out about less than three weeks ago has finally arrived. That's right, everyone. It's Universal... Wait, what's it called? International and Universal Infinity Day. That's right. It's philosophy time. <laughs> For those of you who somehow don't know what's going on here, Universal... And Wait, what's it called again? International and Universal Infinity Day is a day for all of us to be philosophers. I found this old Gizmodo article called Eight Great Philosophical Questions That Will Never Solve, and if that's not a challenge worthy of international and whatever it's called day, I don't know what is. Question one, why is there something rather than nothing? Or in other words, like, why does anything exist at all? Now, as a Christian, obviously my answer is it exists because God made it, which at first doesn't really seem to solve the question because if God made everything, who made God, right? This is a question about causes, right? Like what caused the first thing to exist. And intuitively, we usually go like, if anything exists, we need to explain how it got here. But actually, I don't think that's quite right. I think it's true to say that everything with a beginning has a cause, but if there's something that doesn't begin, well, we don't need to explain where it came from because it was always there, right? If the universe was infinite, we wouldn't need to explain where it came from because we'd just be like, well, it was always here. However, as we all know, expansion of the universe, Big Bang Theory, yada yada, the universe did have a beginning at a finite fixed point in time. And so what could cause that universe? Well, whatever that cause was, it would have to be outside the universe, which would mean it was outside of space and time. It would have to be something with an immense amount of power. It would have to be something you would assume with some kind of creative mind or something. And the reason I say whatever caused the universe to exist must have a mind, like not a brain obviously, but some kind of like capacity to will things and make them happen is because if it was mindless forces of some kind that have been around forever that created the universe, those would have to be constant because they're outside of time. And so they would have had to always be creating the universe, which begs the question, why did the universe suddenly pop into existence at a fixed point in time? Why hasn't it always existed if those causes have always existed? A mind on the other hand would have the capacity to go, okay, not yet, now, big bang universe begins. So why is there something rather than nothing? Well, to me, the most logical answer is that somewhere outside of our universe, beyond the reach of our ability to measure, there is some kind of eternal, non-physical, spaceless, timeless, powerful, creative mind at work, which when you put that all together, I must say sounds uncannily like the way the Bible describes God. So there you go. Question two. Is our universe real? Now this one... Who can say, really? I mean, the classic argument here is how do you know this is not just a matrix scenario? How do you know you're not just a brain in the jar and that all of this is some kind of simulation? And the answer is... We kinda don't know, we kinda can't know, but like pragmatically, what choice do we have? I mean, some people say, ah, it makes no difference. Like whether it's real or not, it feels real enough, so just get on with it. And I don't really buy that. Like I think it actually really matters whether this is all real or not. For me, this is just one of those base level assumptions that I have to make to do any kind of thinking. So it may be that I'm a brain in a jar and not a, full surrounded by streamers doing real philosophy, but what can you do? I think this one might actually be unanswerable. But I guess where I land on it is this. If there's a simulation, who's doing the simulating? Like who's putting it on? There is some base level reality somewhere all the way down. And again, this is where my Christian worldview comes in and I go, you know what? I choose to trust that God is trustworthy. He is the like ground of all being, the basis of all reality. And so I can trust that what I'm experiencing is real. Can I prove that? Well, no, but pragmatically I put it in the same category as I can't prove my parents love me. They could be faking it, but all of the weight of the evidence that I'm able to gather with the tools that I've got says that they do. Could those tools be flawed? Could it all be wrong? Sure, but it makes the most pragmatic sense to go on assuming that my parents love me until I have some kind of evidence to the contrary. And in the same way, I think it makes the most sense to trust that our senses are giving us reliable data because what else are we gonna do? Interestingly, if you are a strict materialist, like if you believe that the way we got here was by evolution and that's the end of the story, then actually, why would you trust your senses? Why would you trust the mind that evolution has given you? Because all evolution does is adapt you for survival. It doesn't adapt you for truth. So on a strict atheist, 
materialist understanding of the universe, I'd say it doesn't really matter if you're a brain in a jar or not because the brain in your head is no more reliable. It is just a meat machine that's been accidentally programmed to keep you alive. Whether or not it can actually give you reliable information is like completely up for grabs. This is gonna be a long video. Question number three. Do we have free will? Are my choices actually my choices or is it all programmed? Now, again, if you're an atheist, strict materialist, the answer is no, you don't have free will. Because if everything is just biology, if there is no transcendent self and your mind is just the physicality of your brain, then what you believe to be your emotions are just synapses firing, what you believe to be your choices is just your brain doing what it was always going to do. Given all of those millions of years of evolutionary history that ended up with your brain being what it is, that brain is just gonna do what it was always gonna do. You're just a really sophisticated biological computer operating on its evolutionary programming. So do you have free will? No. Except you do though, because the material universe is not all there is, or at least, that's where my money is. And when you bring God in, you have what is, in my opinion, a much more interesting set of questions about like, if God is all powerful and all knowing, how can we have free will? Like something that I love puzzling over is like, are my ideas really my ideas? Cause like the things that I'm saying to you in this video, right? The ideas that are forming in my head as I speak, they're occurring to me for the first time now on Universal and International Infinity Day 2021. But God, knew every thought I was going to have since time before time. So who had these thoughts first? Or like my books, right? I plotted out the Phoenix Files in the like mid to late 2000s. I came up with those ideas. However, God knew the whole series before I even started writing it, before I was even born, before the universe existed. So who came up with my stories? And the truth is, I still think I did. I still think God gives us the dignity of our ideas being ours. I think God knows it all beforehand, but I think we still do fundamentally have free will. We do fundamentally have choice. And I think the whole broad sweeping narrative of the Bible, whatever that's worth to you, is a story about how our choices really matter, how they really make a difference in the universe for good or for ill. Can I explain exactly how God's sovereignty and human choice go hand in hand and can both be real at the same time? No. Nah but I believe they can because God says they can and I believe him. Which leads us to question four, does God exist? Yes, next. No, kidding, I got more. But first we've got to figure out what we mean by God. If we mean like the Greek gods and the Roman gods and the gods of myth, they are basically like the Asgardians from the MCU, right? They are super powerful beings that exist in the universe. They live, they die. They're way bigger and longer living than us, but they are fundamentally like creatures. And so really, I guess you have to put them on the same level as aliens, right? Like either they're out there somewhere and they're doing a really good job of hiding or they're not out there. But if by God, we mean the kind of being that is worshiped by Muslims, Christians, Jews, etc., then like we said before, that God transcends the universe, right? And so figuring out whether that kind of God exists is a real challenge because the only way we could do it is if that God chose to enter into the universe and reveal himself to us. Now, Christians, Muslims, Jews would all agree that God has done that through the creation of the universe and that he's interacted with humanity in different ways. And so we would all say that you can know something about the existence of God through his revelation. But Christianity takes it a step further and says God has actually entered into our universe and lived a human life among us. And on that basis, I would say that our best toolkit for figuring out if God exists, or at least if the Christian God exists, is not science or even philosophy, but history. I've actually written a short book about this called How Do We Know That Christianity Is Really True? And the basic argument is because the core claim of Christianity is a historical claim that God entered into human history as a human being who died and came back to life again, we can use the tools of history to investigate whether or not that actually happened. And like, basically this is why I'm a follower of Jesus, because I believe that that historical data checks out. And so if you're interested in the question of does God exist, this line of inquiry is where I'd suggest that you go, like not necessarily my book, but the historical evidence. Because if Jesus really rose from the dead in actual history, that proves that he was who he says he was, that proves that he was God, which means God does exist because he is him. Man, this is going on a lot longer than I thought, but that's just how it is with Universal and International Infinity Day. Am I right, guys? You just get carried away with the fun of philosophy. So I'll tell you what, this is gonna be... <laughs> So I tell you what, we're only halfway through. This is gonna be a two-parter. So come back tomorrow for more exciting philosophy. I'll see you then.